Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Best Gimp training series video. In this video we're going to be going over the final selection tool, which is called the foreground select tool. And as you can see from the description, this tool is for selecting a region that you consider to be the foreground. Remember, selections don't actually make any changes to the picture, they just allow you to select a region that you desire. This tool works the best if your foreground and your background are completely different colors. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want you to do is open up this image that I've shared with you. It's called Flower. And I left a description below for where you can get this image. So let's go ahead and select the foreground select tool. And you start by simply tracing a very rough outline of your foreground. Just make sure you don't actually cross over into your foreground. You want to stay out here in the background. Once that's done, you'll notice that this turns kind of like blue. And the reason is because we've chosen our preview color to be blue. You can change this to whatever one that you want. Depending on the color of your background and your foreground, this could be helpful in determining your edge lines. So once we connect our line, the next thing we have to do is we actually have to paint the pixels that we want to be part of the foreground. You can change the size of your brush depending on the size of your foreground and the size of your image. I can simply drag this slider up or down, and that changes my brush size. If you look down here at smoothing, you notice the description it says, smaller value gives you more accurate selection border, but may introduce holes, which means the opposite is true if it's a higher number. A higher number gives you a less accurate border, and it's less likely to contain holes. So let's just leave it on 3 for now. You notice that there's this color sensitivity drop down. You can play with this as you become more advanced at using this tool. But for now, let's just leave it at defaults. As you can see, we're leaving contiguous check, which means it's going to assume that the foreground is connected pixels. So, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the pixels that we want to be included in the foreground. Now, what you need to do is just make sure you get the darkest darks and the lightest lights of every color. So as you can see I just basically put one stroke down it. I included these dark oranges, all these yellows, these bright yellows, these dark shadows, and these bright petals. Now by doing that it intelligently selected the rest of the flower because it knew that these pixels fell within the range that I just selected. So it's a really quick tool. I mean, you just kind of paint one or two strokes, and when you release the mouse button, it picks the rest. It, for some reason, didn't select all of these pixels. Well, I can always paint another line and have it recalculate. And what it does is it actually just adds to whatever it's already chosen. Before you make your final selection, you can come over here and you can actually feather the edges. And depending on how hard of a line you actually want, you can play around with this radius. Now you only get one shot at this feathering edges, and then it actually applies. And if you don't like the feathering, then you have to use this tool again to make your foreground selection. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Let's turn our feathering radius down to 3. And once we are satisfied with this, we're going to make sure that we're on the foreground and we're not on the tool. And then when I'm done, I just hit the Enter key. And as you can see, I have a perfect selection around this foreground. And now you have options. You can delete it. I'm going to Control Z to undo that. You can select the invert and delete everything except for the image. I'm going to Control Z to undo that. And if you want a transparent background, you go to Layer, Transparency, you add an alpha channel, and then you delete it. And now you have a flower with no background. And this image can be easily pasted onto another image. And we're going to be going over doing that in further videos. Anyway, that's pretty much the foreground select tool. It's pretty easy and straightforward as long as you have a good contrast between the foreground and the background. You shouldn't really have any problems. 
Anyway guys, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. Thanks.